Welcome to the class of characteristics of ionic and covalent compounds. And this is most probably the last class of this video series of chapter chemical bond. And hopefully after this video, I shall be uploading uh, some creative questions solving techniques, which is not the theoretical part, but the explanation of the things that we learn together. So in this video, I shall be focusing on to explain these four things, which is already explained in the books. Actually, three things. So melting and boiling points, uh, solubility, and the electrical conductivity. Why atomic compounds and the covalent compounds are not same? There are some reasons, and we need to understand what are the reasons. So if you look, that what about the ionic compounds? The ionic compounds forms with two different type of ions like these sodium chloride compounds forms with different ions like cations of sodium like sodium plus and chlorine minus they form sodium chloride which is okay but in case of covalent compounds like CH4 methane carbon dioxide ammonia which is very well known very common uh, like examples of covalent compounds but you see in these covalent compounds it's formed by sharing electrons so why the melting point and the boiling point will differ in case of ionic and covalent compounds if you see simply the melting point of sodium chloride which is very usually known as our salt table salt so sodium chloride is, the melting point is 801 degrees Celsius melting point or if you see the boiling point which is 6, 1465 degrees Celsius comparatively it's high if you see in case of ammonia the melting point uh, ammonia the melting point is actually minus 77.4 degrees Celsius or in case of boiling point it's nearly 33 degrees Celsius so you see the difference between these or even in case of potassium chloride the melting point is nearly 707 degrees Celsius if I'm not wrong there are some sort of variations but you see the differences why it varies a lot the question is why the melting point and the boiling point of ionic compounds is higher than the covalent compounds because the ionic compounds were formed by the electrostatic attractions in between the oppositely charged ions like these cations and anions they form this bond by the electrostatic bond which is very I mean tightly organized and that is why more heat or more energy is required to, to melt it to boil it that is why the melting point and the boiling point of uh, the ionic compounds is higher but in case of covalent compound you see this is actually a gaseous state it's in gaseous state but it has the, the solid state so there is no tightly organized or tight bonds in the covalent bonds so they just shared electrons so they just shared electrons and they are tightly joined together with weak van der Waals uh, attractions which is very weak and that is why the melting and boiling point of covalent compounds is less than dynamic compounds so this too is simply explainable then why the melting and boiling point of ionic compounds is higher than the covalent compounds nothing about the solubility and in this case we need to explain something special which is about the polarity when you think about this thing then we must think about polarity and this is a very important concept in this chapter what about polarity so if you if you see if you see the polarity in this uh, and this concept then we need to think about water okay in case of solubility ionic compounds all the ionic compounds is soluble to the water it dissolves in water but except some exceptions like covalent compounds like glucose and sugar 
glucose is C6H12O6 and sugar C12H22O11 except these but there are some other covalent compounds that is soluble to the water. Why all the ionic compounds is soluble to water? The question is this, the answer is polarity. Why polarity? Because whenever you see the water molecule is formed with two hydrogen and one oxygen, then there is the lone pair electrons and there is the shared electrons. You know it already. But the thing is, you studied about electronegativity in chapter 4, like periodic table, that oxygen has more electronegativity. That is why these shared electrons is attracted to oxygen <clears throat> and that's why oxygen becomes partially negative and hydrogen becomes partially positive and this sign is called delta so we can say this is plus delta plus delta and this is minus delta so when when water I mean water molecule so oxygen attracts that shared electrons and hence it become negative and hydrogen become positive and this negativity and positivity means there is a polarity polarity means poles means plus and minus like in earth we have two poles north pole and south pole that is two different part so the polarity means it has two parts positive and negative and that is why that is why this plus and minus will create the distinctions in between the ions and creates the chance to soluble in here so that is why water acts a universal solvent in this case sodium chloride as we are taking as example of sodium chloride as because it's very well known you see this is cation and this is anion so when we will mix sodium chloride with water what will happen like you see this is sodium plus and this is chlorine minus so all the positive ions will be attracted by chlorine and sodium so sodium plus will attract the negative one so oxygen will be attracted like this so oxygen will be attracted to the sodium and this would be hydrogen this would be hydrogen now you think that what is the reason of the solubility as because this is negative so all the negative oxygen will be attracted by sodium plus and all the positive like hydrogen will be attracted by chloride or chloride ions so oxygen and hydrogen all the hydrogen will turn to will be will be uh, will, like this so this is oxygen so this is hydrogen 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 so it means all the hydrogen will attract to chloride ions and all the oxygen will attract sodium ion so like ionic compounds is forming by creating ions because of donations of electrons and exceptions of electrons so that is accepting the electrons and donating the electrons that it creates the positive and negative charge so that as the positive and negative charge is also created in water molecule hence the ionic compounds will be soluble in the water and that is why water is called universal solvent and due to the polarity ionic compounds soluble to the water and it dissolves in water and this is the main reason of the solubility so without exceptions like glucose and sugar this is actually the co covalent compounds but they also dissolve in water so all the ionic compounds that dissolve in water and some exceptions without some exceptions all the co covalent compounds is not soluble to the water as because covalent compounds doesn't create the polarity so they don't have the positive and negative pair so they don't dissolve in water and in case of electrical conductivity it has similar sort of answer like in case of electrical conductivity like how we will fill up this so this is water and we know this is soluble to 
the sodium chloride and also glucose also glucose so if we keep two different two different beaker and we put some anode and cathode and then if we see that if there is any changes in these solutions then we'll find that the solutions of sodium chloride as it is aqueous actually aqueous of sodium chloride is creating as some changes in sort of in anode and cathode but in case of glucose it's not changing as because the covalent compounds doesn't create any ions like positive po po positive ions and negative ions so that is why covalent compounds are not electrical conductivity i mean they do not conduct electrons in the soluble fats but sodium chloride or the potassium chloride or magnesium chloride and whatever the ionic compounds are they have the electron conductivity as because they can create the positive ions and negative ions so that is why the electron conductivity or electrical conductivity is the characteristics of ionic compounds but not the covalent compounds so I hope you can write the difference between ionic compounds and covalent compounds and these questions is very common to your exam like write down the difference between ionic and covalent compounds on that we can say that ionic compounds the melting point and the boiling point is high compared to the covalent bonds and in case of covalent bonds the melting point and the boiling point is less in case of ionic compounds we can say this is soluble to water but in some exceptions without some exceptions all the covalent bonds are not soluble to water we can say that in case of ionic compounds that it's it creates with, with between the ions like positive and negative ions but it creates this covalent compounds i mean the ionic compounds creates and formed by the electrostatic force but the covalent compounds forms with the van der waals force and then we can say that ionic compounds is electrical conductor like they are creating the polarity but in case of covalent bond they are not creating any polarity so they are not electrical conductor so in this case we can say the difference between ionic and covalent compounds and i'll upload another class on ionic and covalent compounds differences and writing down the actual differences between these with some fragmentations so i hope you understand the characteristics of ionic and covalent compounds and things should be very clear that the melting point and boiling point of ionic compounds is higher than the covalent compounds the solubility of ionic compounds is okay because it's soluble to the water because it creates the polarity but the covalent compounds they don't in case of electrical conductivity ionic compounds is is the electric conductor but but the covalent compounds they don't because they don't create the polarity so i hope you understand the class and of course see you on the next class take care stay well bye